For the last 10 years or so, the Daughters of the King have done the Stations of the Cross for Lent. This year, of course, we can't do it in person, but we would like to present this offering of the Stations of the Cross for you to join us so that you may benefit from the way of Christ. Station one, Pilate condemns Jesus to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because, because by, by your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. A reading from Mark chapter 15. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. A reflection. Pilate doesn't particularly want to condemn Jesus. He is curious about him, but doesn't really care if he lives or dies. The moment of judgment comes and the uncertainty is over. The words of sentence have a force that hits Jesus in the stomach. His breathing changes and for a moment everything around him is a blur and echoey. He is going to die. The realization is a stark moment for anyone and one we will all face in some form one day. He has been preparing for this, but when the moment comes, relief and terror mingle. The journey ahead is one of mockery and hatred, as well as compassion and last moments with those he loves. It will be an endurance test beyond comparison. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for you faced Pilate and was subjected to injustice. Be with those who sit in judgment on others and all recently sentenced by courts. Amen. O oh, Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O oh Lord. Station two, Jesus accepts his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Mark. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A reflection. In case he was in any doubt of what was in store, he has to carry his own cross. It is like execution victims being forced to dig their own graves. It is mental torture. If he refuses, what can they do to him? More beatings? Kill him quicker? That he does this implies he is either too weak to resist anymore or believe if her believes a last minute reprieve is possible, so had better so he had better cooperate just in case. Does God really intend this to go to the end? Will legions of angels come to his aid in, in the in the neck of time? and remove the cup he, has sucked. he agonized over in the garden. Perhaps he is resolute. This must be. Whatever the cause is, is in carrying the cross, he is embracing death. Lord be Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for you carried your cross and embrace the consequences of our sin. Give us courage to take up your cross and follow you. Amen. O Savior, Savior of, the world, of the world, who by your cross and precious blood redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Station three, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. 
because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. A reflection. Even if Jesus is resolute, this is physically exhausting. He stumbles. Does he just trip and go down on one knee? Or does he fall flat on his face? Both will hurt, a smashed knee, and further bruises to his lacerated face. Hands tied to the cross prevent him breaking his fall, and the weight of the cross will increase the force of the impact. He is unlikely to be met with much sympathy from his guards and execution party. Their only interest is to ensure that the task is carried through. So if they help him to his feet, it is only so they can continue the process. This show has to go on. It won't do to end here. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for you shared our weakness as we stumble, lift us up. Amen. O, o Savior, Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Luke. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that it will be opposed so the, the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. A sword will pierce your own soul also. A reflection. Does it help to come face to face with your mother on the day of your death? He is not alone, and she can do this one thing, last thing for him, accompany him in his final hours. It is torture to see him going through this. That sword Simeon spoke of in the temple so many years ago in his presentation is piercing her very soul, and nothing can dull its pain. No parent wants to see their child die before them. Many do in infancy, through warfare and violence, through tragedy and illness, sometimes because of what they have done, and sometimes because of others' hatred. In the back of her mind, where does Mary place her son right now? What have you done? Anger or sorrow, perhaps? Defeat that she is unable to protect him? These tears are the rawest. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise, for in your mother we see a model of devotion. Fill us with your grace, that we may follow in your steps in passion and glory. Amen. O Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Station 5. Simon of Serene helps Jesus carry the cross. <clears throat> we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Mark, chapter 15. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. A reflection. Simon had come to Jerusalem for the festival and now finds himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Simon is drawn into Jesus' story and compelled to accompany him on these final steps. He would be unwilling, but could find himself in deep danger if things go bad. 
It doesn't pay to get too close to Roman execution parties in case they take a dislike to you and you end up on a cross too. Did Simon's encounter with Jesus at these final moments change him? Did something of the quality of Jesus' death move him? For the moment he is complicit in Jesus' death, but powerless to do any other. If he refuses, he will die too. So to save his own neck, he assists the execution. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for you became weak in sharing in our vulnerability. Teach us to accept our limitations and with humility to accept aid with good grace when we need it. Amen. O oh, Savior, Savior of the world, the world who by your, your cross and precious blood redeemed us, us. Save us and help us, we, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Station 6. Veronica offers her veil to Jesus. We adore we you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Matthew. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcome, welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. A reflection. Jesus touched many people in his ministry. It is possible that not all turned on him. To some he showed kindness and respect where others could spare none. Does the introduction of Veronica into the sequence stand for those who refuse to join with the rest of the crowd, baying for his blood? There is something touching and also bizarre in this random act of kindness. Jesus is covered in blood and sweat. He is exhausted and going to his death. It seems so trivial to mop his brow at this point. He needs so much more. But a, hum a human touch is all the same. Veronica reminds us of those who offer dignity to the dying, even to the convicted. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for in your ministry you touched untouchables with love and regarded the dignity of all. Pour your healing touch on all your people that all may rejoice in your redemption. Amen. O oh, Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Station 7. Jesus falls the second time. We adore we you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Isaiah. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. A reflection. The weight of his cross and the energy required for this task is too much for Jesus. Not even Simon's help has prevented this. He falls again. His body is reaching the limits of its endurance, and each fall shows the humanity being stretched to and beyond breaking point. We are not looking at a detached superhero here, someone who remains inviolable and untouched by it all. Does this silence the crowd and bring cries for mercy? Or are they largely unmoved, as his executioners are? Does Simon get a sharp reprimand, reprimand too 
for also having difficulty carrying the weight of Jesus' cross? Those who accompany the dying often stumble themselves, and those who seek to support someone going through a veil of misery or a task that is breaking share some of that exhaustion. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise, for in your passion we see the extent of your love for us. By with, be with all at the point of breaking. Amen. O, o Savior, Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Station 8, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Luke. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that have never bore, and the breasts that have never nursed. And then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is grieved, what will happen when it is dry? A reflection. It is odd, but some people view executions as entertainment, and meet those about to die with vitriol. Are these women there for mawkish reasons? Are they drawn by the horror of it? Come to see if it is real? Some will be hate-filled and angry with Jesus, and either because he failed to be the rebel leader they wanted, or because he has dared to oppose the status quo. Some clearly weep for him. He tells them to weep for themselves and their children. The women stand for humanity. His execution condemns the world, and they share in that. Mothers give birth to those who grow up to be victims and perpetrators. The soldiers are also sons, as Jesus and those being crucified with him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise, for in the women you pronounce judgment on all we could become. May the challenge from your procession call us to faithful and righteous living. Amen. O oh, Savior, Savior of the, the world, world who by, by your cross and precious blood redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Station 9, Jesus Falls the Third Time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Bible reading, Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our inequities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. Reflection. To fall once would be enough, twice pitiful. The third fall, especially given that he has help, shows that they have broken him and are destroying him. The king who rode triumphant on the donkey has been utterly humiliated and crushed. The ruthlessness of this execution is decisive. The aim is obliteration and a determined message to all who watch. Don't mess with the powers that be. Taking up the cross is no spiritual analogy. It can bring literal breaking. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for you because weak in order to redeem the world, raise all who have broken under the strain of your cross. Amen. O, o Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood redeemed us, Save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Mark. Then they brought Jesus into the place called Golgotha, 
which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. A reflection. Romans have one further humiliation in store. The crucified are stripped of all clothing, of anything that distinguishes them or gives individual expression. Whatever status they had in life, in death they are all equally disregarded. All is brought to naught. Naked they face their death, shamed and exposed, completely without protection. The only saving grace is by this point Jesus is probably past carry, impervious to what is going on. The soldiers auction the clothes. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise, for you have endured shame for the love of our love. Be with all those whose nakedness is exposed and who are treated as commodities. Amen. O Spirit of the world, the world, who by your cross and precious blood redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Station 11, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Bible reading, John 19, 18 to 20. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Reflection. The nails cause his body to go into shock. Each stage of this execution is designed to inflict maximum pain and the nails penetrate sensitive nerves, sending excruciating pain shooting through his arm. He is lifted up on high and any hope of a last minute reprieve is lost. Death is now to be welcomed for the release it will bring. How he manages some words at this point is remarkable. His endurance is amazing. Above him, the irony of his charge has been written in Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. This is not a statement of anti-faith, but designed to humiliate any messianic fervor still smoldering. This is what the Romans do to challenges to their power. It is a statement of defeat. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for you endured the horror of the nails, piercing you hands and feet. May your wounds bring us true healing and peace. Amen. O Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Station 12, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because, because by your, your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. A reading from Mark. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemme sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. A reflection. With a cry he breathes his last. It is finished and at last the unbearable suffering ends. The sky turns black. Is there an eclipse? The death of God is a blasphemy and the deed done is breathtaking in its audacity. Does he silence fall across the area? A community sensitive to omens and portents would not fail to note the darkness. Or was it like 
Good Friday today, people carrying on as if nothing much had taken place with, with their training preparations for the Sabbath and the business of government. In his death, God has truly embraced the suffering of the world and taken responsibility for it. There is nothing remote about God, even in the darkest places. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise, for in your death you embrace the darkness, as we die with you, so we may be brought to live with you. Amen. O Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Station 13. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Mark. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Reflection. Jesus dies relatively quickly. They don't need to finish him off to prevent upsetting the religious customs, as if the preceding stations cause no offense to devotion. The body is received by his mother and supporters. The heart-wrenching scene of the mother cradling her dead son's body is almost too much to bear. The fallen hero is treated with dignity. His body will not be left for the birds to devour. Broken friends and family carry him away for a hurried burial. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for your timeless body was held and mourned. Be with all who grieve and whose hearts ache with sorrow. Amen. Amen. O, o Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from Mark. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in the tomb. He had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. A reflection. Holy Saturday, the day between Good Friday and Easter Day, has a great importance. It is the day that Jesus is simply dead and lying in the cold earth. The coldness and emptiness of death is held at his tomb. The long silence tells us that death is not nothing at all. It is heartbreaking and disrupts us. Our generation has a great difficulty holding this great silence and loss. Jesus has gone to the place of the dead so that he may complete his work there, and we are then we are in for a surprise. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise, for you plunge the depths of loss and despair. May all who have died be brought to the table of your mercy. Amen. O the Savior, Savior of the world, world who by your cross and precious, precious blood redeemed us, save us and help us, us we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Thank you for joining us for our Stations of the Cross. We hope this is a good devotion for you for the season of Lent. We will end with a prayer. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise, for, for you have broken, broken the power of death. Fill us with your new life, 
that our lives may sing with your Alleluia. Amen.